Hi all. Welcome to our channel English Folio. Let's learn together. So today we are going to discuss about William Shakespeare's major tetralogy. It's a collection of four historical plays. They are King Richard II, Henry IV Part 1, Part 2 and King Henry V. Before moving on to the video, if you have not yet subscribed our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss our latest updates. So, let's start. First major play of this tetralogy is King Richard II. It's considered to be written in 1595 and its full title is The Life and Death of King Richard II. Major source for all these historical plays is Edward Hall's The Union of the Two Illustrious Families of Lancaster and York. Major characters of this play are King Richard II, John of Gaunt, who was the uncle and Duke of Lancaster, then Duke of York, Thomas Mowbray, who is the Duke of Norfolk, Queen Anne Bohemia, Duchess of York, then there is a rebel group which includes Henry, Earl of Northumberland, Lord Rose, Lord Fitzwater, then there is a group of allies which includes Duke of Surrey, all of Salisbury, Lord Berkeley, Bushy, Bagot, Green and so on. Now let's discuss about its plot. The play spans last two years of Richard's life from 1398 to 1400. First act begins with King Richard sitting majestically in his throne and arbitrating a dispute between Thomas Mowbray and Richard's cousin Henry Brolingbroke, who later becomes King Henry IV over an issue of squandering money and murder of Duke of Gloucester. After failing several attempts, Richard opted for a trial by battle method to settle the dispute. But before the tournament, both are banished. Mowbray is permanently banished and Henry is banished for six years. So this was the first major mistake committed by the king in a series of mistakes eventually leading for his death. So this was an abrupt arbitrary decision which increased the suspicion of King's involvement in the death of Duke of Gloucester. Meanwhile, his uncle John of Gaunt dies and all his wealth, money and land is seized by Richard which belonged to Henry who was the son of John of Gaunt. King Richard used all the public money to fund wars and he started to tax the commoners. He also fined nobles for the crimes committed by their ancestors. So these all created unrest among the nobles as well as commoners. They all turned against the king. The nobility helped Prince Henry to secretly return and overthrow King Richard. While Richard left London to attend to war in Ireland, Henry invades north coast of England. He claims the land and throne and he crowns himself as the next king of England. When Richard comes back after the war, he is taken as a prisoner to the castle of Pomfret and he is killed there at the castle. The play ends with a pledge taken by King Henry to undertake a journey to Jerusalem to cleanse himself of his part in King Richard's death. So this is all about the plot of the play. Now discussing about the major cause, we have this royal throne of kings. The sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, the seat of Mars. This is by John of Gaunt, Act 2, Scene 1. Another cortus, the ripest fruit first falls. This is from King Richard, Act 2, Scene 1. Not all the water in the rough root sea can wash the bam from an anointed king. King Richard, Act 3, Scene 2. Forget. Forgive, conclude and be agreed. Our doctors say this is no time to bleed. A card from Henry in the final act is I'll make a voyage to the holy land to wash this blood off from my guilty hand. So these are the major points to be noted from the play King Richard II. Moving on to the second play in the tetralogy. It is Henry IV part 1. It depicts the span of history that begins with Hotspur's battle at Homilden and ends with the defeat of the rebels at Shrewsbury. Its full title is The History of King Henry IV with the Battle at Shrewsbury 
between the king and henry percy major characters in the play are king henry 4 then his son prince hall who later becomes king henry 5 ralph neville sir walter blount sir john falstaff he is a major character who is also making his appearance in the next play too he is an old knight then ned pions bardolf pito francis osler and rebels group which is headed by henry percy as the play begins king henry 4 wanted to leave for the crusades but he is having some troubles with the borders of scotland and wales as well as he has got staunch opposition from edmund mortimer who is richard's chosen heir but what threatens him more is his son henry 5 he forsaken the royal court and he wasted his time in taverns with low companies especially with john falstaff he is a drunkard old fat corrupt man but a kind of charisma attracts falstaff to henry 5 the rebel group and henry's group is meeting at battle of shrewsbury henry asks his son to join the battle and the three groups meet at the battle ground of shrewsbury one is the henry group with all the royal army then the rebel group which is headed by henry percy as well as prince hall's group with his low companions this low companions are under the able commandship of john falstaff prince hall vows to his father to fight and falstaff is interested with the soldiers and at the battle he kills hotspur and they win the fight but it was only a temporary win because archbishop of york joined with the duke of northumberland and he posed a real threat in the coming days so the play has got an unsettled ending which sets stage for henry 4 part 2 this is all about the plot going on to the important quotes we have a quote from falstaff let us be dinas forestos gentlemen of the shade minions of the moon he was but as a cuckoo as in june heard not regarded this is from king henry 4 two stars keep no their motion in one sphere this is from prince hall the better part of valor is discretion this is from falstaff thy ignominy sleep with thee in the grave but not remembered in thy epitaph this is the quote from prince hall so these are the important points to remember from this play third play in the tetralogy is henry 4 part 2 it is considered to be written between 1596 and 1599 the major characters are king henry 4 prince henry duke of lancaster duke of gloucester all of warwick all of surrey rebel group which is led by archbishop of york all of northumberland other characters are fang snayo silence master shallow and of course sir john falstaff as a major character who appears in this play too the plot revolves around prince hall's journey towards kinship and his ultimate rejection of falstaff and his low companions so the tone is that of allegic false steps aging and closeness to death as discussed in the play he says that i am not only witty in myself but the cause that wit is in other men then hall is completely rejecting false step he ne- he can no longer associated with the london low life he imprisons the thieves he was with them once but now he is totally rejecting all these low lives and he is taking up all the duties of royal household the play ends with an epilogue which gives us a clue that next play is also awaiting in this tetralogy that is mature henry 5 and is courtship with queen catherine of france we also gets an idea from this epilogue that falstaff is going to die it's written that falstaff shall die of sweat so that's all about this play discussing about major 
quotes we have a quote o sleep o gentle sleep nature's soft nurse how have i frightened thee that thou no more will weigh my eyelids down and sleep my senses in forgetfulness so these are the major points to remember in this play now let's move on to the other play in this tetralogy final play of this major tetralogy is king henry 5 its full title is the chronicle history of henry the 5th with this battle fought against agincourt it's considered to be written in 1599 and this play chronicles the events before and after the battle of agincourt which is an episode in 100 years war it starts with a prologue this prologue is all about elizabethan stage that it's a criticism against elizabethan stage that it lacked scenery so the chorus asks the audience to use their imagination to overcome the limitations of the stage the chorus says that oh for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention so the chorus asks the audience to use their imagination to view the play in its full effect the play is divided into five acts the first act deals with king and his decision to invade france he is a rightful heir to the french throne but when he makes advances for this french dauphin insults him with a gift of tennis balls the second act we can see this act is a dedication to the war in this it is told that nuff all the youth of england are on fire they sell their pastor nuff to buy the horse so this quote shows how each and every young men of england is getting themselves ready for the war each plot begins with a chorus and there is also a subplot of earl of cambridge to assassinate henry at southampton in the act 3 Henry makes advances with his troops to the French port of Harfleur there he motivates and encourages his men to fight for a national cause Act 4 is the battle of Agincourt so there is Saint Crispin's day speech in this act there he motivates his troop men by saying that we few we happy few we band of brothers for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother so armed with long bows the england won the war in act 5 it's several years after the war so the english and french they are having constant negotiations and they are arriving at peace treaties so there is treaty of troyes with which they are arriving at peace and then king henry 5 tries to woo French princess Catherine of Valois and he marries her so that he inherits France finally so this is how the play goes major chords all things are ready if our mind be so other chords men of few words are the best men another one is self love my leash is not so vile a sin as self neglecting so these are the major points to note in the play king henry 5 so that's all about the video thanks for watching and if you like this video please do share and subscribe and be always with us because let's learn together thank you